Hello YouTube, I'm Jack Long, the Eagle Musketeer, coming to you with another video. How are you? So, today I'm going to be trying out a new version of my Unicorn Control build that is utilising the uh, new card from Legacy of the Valiant called Obedient Scald. Now, I've had a couple of people request a new updated version of my Unicorn deck, and I've got to say, I've had a lot of trouble trying to freaking... Ah, it's so difficult. The main reason why it's been so difficult is because, well... You have to summon three monsters with Obedient Scald, and as much as that is fantastic, and the fact that it can set you up for an instant one card Unicor, um, which is fantastic because it means you don't have to put much of your hand advantage onto it, which means you can better utilize it for a Unicor's actual effect. The fact is, is it has to be three completely different beast monsters, and they have to be freaking uh, different name ones. That's the main thing. So you've got two main targets you want to summon. Um, and I don't know what to do. Literally, honestly, I'm, I've got a build now. I'm not currently too fussed on it. Ah, Mega Noob! I know this person. Hello, Mega Noob. So I'm gonna have a couple of duels with this deck and just see how, how where the wind blows. And I'm, I, if there are any noobs on Dueling Network, I do apologise. I'm using Dueling Network because Yu-Gi-Oh Pro hasn't got Obedient School on it because apparently Dueling Network's more efficient. But anyway, I know a Mega Noob, so there should be. A potentially good card, a uh, duel even, and and by that I mean wow, look at his hand. Um, not ideal, but I mean, it's an instant unicorn. Oh dear, mother of fucking lord. Okay, let's do the thing. Now this is where I've been having some trouble. So you know now you'll be able to see the contents of my deck. I'm using some stuff that I wouldn't normally use. Um, with some of them being a bit questionable, and if I get to them, I will get to them. So we're gonna go for you, for you, and. For you. Yep, I'm using the fable Pegalilusurus, um, which is a level one tuner that when it is discarded, you can special summon it from your hand um, in face down defense position, and when it's flipped face up, you may reveal one fable monster in your hand and then send one fable monster from your deck to the graveyard. So, this card has a lot of synergy with the raccoons. You won't necessarily want to be sending fables from your deck to the graveyard. There aren't really many cards that can do this, but this is a level one tuner, and comparing it to Catsif, this card actually sums itself, which means my opponent doesn't necessarily have to have a, um, a, uh, a face-up card for me to pop. It means I can just summon this, and with 1,600 defense, it's okay! Um, but with five cards in my hand, five cards with his, I go for a unicorn. And of course, it will get destroyed during the end of the turn. That's the thing. Pegasus is literally there just so I have a third monster to summon. But it doesn't comp it doesn't have completely. It's not completely useless, basically. Um, the best thing about it is that later on I can and will hopefully be able to summon it back with Lockcat for instant level four synchros, um, which is the main reason why I'm using it. So in addition to being a fabled and all of that stuff, I can use it for more. Unicorn stuff. So, um, he's got five in hand, I've got five in hand. If he wants to do anything, I'm just going to set everything. Set everything, hopefully he won't be able to do anything to actually get rid of the Unicorn. If so, I have plenty of things I can do and a backup Unicorn play in hand. So that is the, oh, that is the graveyard, completely forgot. But yeah, so Obedient Squad is fantastic for this deck because of course it gives you a way to summon a Unicorn for one card without using much of your advantage, without losing any advantage really. So he's going to summon Cyber Dragon. I have answers to that if I want to, but I'm not going to because if he attack, if he decides to attack, I will just discard Cerberal for Geeky Break. If he summons a Synchro, which is, or tributes it, okay. So he's going to go for Caius, and he's going to banish that. I can't stop the effect, so I might as well just get rid of it. Go away. Of course, his effect still goes off. That's fine, but yeah, whatever. Ah, okay. So look, look, easily. You've now got now instead of having to you summon these two, use two cards in my hand. I now have Lockcat. So Lockcat, you will you now use his effect, hopefully without Valoring it. Summon this in defense. Um, but actually, we're gonna do stuff slightly differently because you don't completely just go for Unicorn in this bloody deck. Um, so the beautiful thing about this deck is actually you can go for other things as well. So I'm going to go for a level 4 Synchro, of course, and I'm going to go for the Fabled Kodabi. 
Now, the Fable Kajabi is the other level for um, Fable Synchro, which gets an appropriate effect depending on the number of cards in your hand, just like Unicorn. However, it is, of course, slightly different. So, if I have no cards in my hand, then I... Um, then it can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects. And, of course, I now have no cards in my hand. But, of course, it means I can't stop any hand traps he has. But, actually, I've got pretty good hand as it goes. I've got pretty good field. I mean, the Rigiki Break's dead, but I don't give a shit. Um, and I've not been paying attention because I've been talking too much. So I could have gone for Sundayu, which I'm probably going to have to do in now anyway. What an annoyance. Um, oh, well. Let's do that anyway. So, we're going to overlay... I'm going to go for a Sunday U. I'm going to summon this bad boy. Oh, wait, did I click the right one? I'm going to summon in defense mode. Because if he's, he's got an effect, of course, that he can't be selected as an attack target. Of, oh, no, he can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects if I control a beast monster. And I do. And that one can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects either. So we're going to use Sunday U. Sunday U is it. So we're going to detach to summon a big ass token with 2200 attack. So. Yeah. So yeah, actually, I would have done the same amount of damage either way. And now I'm going to end my turn at that. So this is what I love about the Unicorn deck, is as much as you can and will use Unicorn a lot, and that is your main focus, you do have other options. There is another level 4 that if you don't have the amount of cards in your hand to use Unicorn, you can go for Kadabi and just go straight down, beat down. Because Kudabi plus freaking like Horn of the Phantom Beast, as much as I will draw cards with it, it means I just get more cards to protect it. And a 3,000 attack point Kudabi is nothing to be sniffed at. B E A U T full. Um, so yeah. Come on, Omega Noob. Don't let your name, don't become your name. Self fulfilling prophecy and all that junk. Okay, I haven't been on doing that for so long. Look at that. 100 rating. It's beautiful. What are you gonna do, boy? What you gonna do? Come on. Anything? Um, yes, it is. Of course, Sunday you having the effect that you could detach a material from it to a summoner token with attack points equal to the highest on the field. That is Kudabi with 22. I didn't use the Horn of the Phantom Beast on the Kudabi so that my token would have more attack simply because I wanted it to be more of a um, surprise. Oh! Cyber Dragon Nova. And I can't, I can't pop it, which is going to suck balls, but I mean, you can't destroy anything um, on my field apart from the token, so I'm going to hope for God that that doesn't bite me in the arse. Okay, Dre Effect, now level 5, okay. I'm not looking forward to this, because I know that even though I can't be true about battle, the Cyber Dragon Nova is an OTK machine on fucking steroids. Um, and actually, if he was using Cyber Dragons, I'm not surprised he hasn't OTK me already. So, he's going to go for Zen Mayo. Um, which is going to completely fuck me up um, because I now have no back row, which is going to suck arse. But actually, my monsters are relatively well protected. With 2600, he's going to be able to get rid of my token, which is not preferable. No, don't do that. Oh, Mega Noob, why couldn't have you been your namesake? Okay, so destroy two cards on fear to the grave, to the grave. Sad face, bruh. Why you do that? Oh, way. Oh, well, well he's got 2600 attack point, so I'm not too fast at all. I mean, Sunday you can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects as long as I control another beast. He, his only real target to go for is the token, because that's the only thing you can actually get rid of. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not too fast. He may have three cards in hand. I mean, the only thing he can do now is set back row, but. I've already got some stuff on the field now, so I'm going to take, lose my token, but I'm pretty confident I can get rid of those MIO now with Sunday U next turn. But yeah, actually, this deck has been doing much better than I had anticipated. Of course, Lockcat and Pegasus is the um, the main concern I had with this deck. Ah, don't you be setting back, row boy. But, I mean, the thing is, Lockcat used to be the original way of making Unicorn. The original Unicorn, oh, he's made a mistake. Okay, the original Unicorn deck, oh my dear lord, sorry, I, I will finish the sentence one day, but today is not that day. Um, but yeah, but the thing is with the original Unicorn control deck is that you would have, um, you would have a, what do you call it, 
Oh my god, it's just not my day today. Let's just use Sunday use effect and then I'll maybe. Okay, San Dayu effect. Detach, get token with 2600 attack. But yeah, the Unicorn Control decks, they originally used a combination of Lock Cat and, Fa and the Fabled Cat Safe to summon one card Unicorns and, of course, Kodabis to a lesser extent. But the main thing with that is that, of course, Lock Cat is basically a Junk Synchron esque card, and with that, of course, has some inher inherent um, advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage of that being, of course, it's a one card, uh, Synchro. The main disadvantage of that is the fact that your opponent can Vader and Maxi it to death. Now, I mean, ha in terms of this deck, you have much more standard plays, which, of course, you don't get it for one card necessarily, but the Raccoons greatly speed up this deck. And now with um, the, the Obedient School cards, we have it for one card and not have to worry about um, uh, a Effect Vader. The deck still will fall short to... Um, Oh, yes, yes it is, sorry. <laughs> the deck will still fall short to Maxi, but, I mean, that's going to be the nature of the, any deck that uses special summons. But at least with Vayla, if you Vayla a lot, Cat, I won't completely be fucked. And since this, uh, this deck now has many more ways of, okay, I can go for this and not be completely fucked either way, um, be okay. Because the thing is now, with this deck, if I have... Cerberal and Nuzochi in hand, then I'm not completely fucked because I can use them to summon themselves and summon a new monster. Um, but the only thing with Obedient School is that I needed an extra Fabled monster to summon to make it even useful. So, of course, Pebblesus is no cat if I mean, popping cards is really nice, but I mean, if I'm in pole position like here, he's not going to have any face-up cards. Oh, my dear lord. See, and the Pegasus you get to summon. Free ex it's free advantage. And of course can be summoned with raccoons and get its effect when it's face up with the raccoons as well, so it's not completely useless. I may even put a Kushina in this deck just for that reason. Anyway, we're gonna use Lockcat's effect. And we're gonna summon Pegasus. Because I mean, look at him! The little fiend has got a freaking mustache. Oh my god, he's like a musketeer, but not really, but kind of, but yeah, sure, why not? Okay. Oh wow. View. Anyway, so now we've got Kadabi and a Unicorn. Oh my god, I'm such a new. Um, going up against a Mega New. Um, we're going to go for Unicorn. Since actually we do have no cards in hand. I'm not used to this layout, god damn it. I'm, I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Man now. I've, I've, I've changed. But yeah, this deck is awesome. Nasty with both having no hand. Indeed. Okay, so Dre, and then I'm going to attack with Kodabi. That's the main thing that Unicorn does, is that you know, hardly, you very rarely negate stuff, you just make sure that your opponent can't activate stuff. GG. Thank you, bruh. And that was a very embarrassing duel, simply because... I want to see what these are. Because if I had gone for Armory Arm, like a good boy... Okay, it was inconsequential either way. What was I going to draw? I was going to draw... Maxi. Oh, no, you go to draw Shabba Dragon Core. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's pretty much it guys. I'm going to show you the deck list in a second. I'm just going to thank him. But yes, thank you Omega Noob. You are not a noob. And actually I was very lucky knowing a person um, in duels. Um, so I completely ignore the um, the extra deck because it's completely inconsequential. These are just ideas I've been toying around with. Because this deck is really bloody annoying when it was in construction because I pretty much, when I made this deck, I thought, okay, I get the old version and just rejigger it a bit, but it wasn't that simple because, of course, I needed to introduce some new beasts into the deck simply to make the deck work because Obedient School is a bit too good not to run. So with that in mind, I completely um, rebuild it from the ground up, and then I thought, okay, it's not working. So I just got the other deck and I properly, I properly took away everything that wasn't useful, anything that I didn't need or was a bit kind of like, mm, I'm... Bit that wasn't that sure on, I got rid of and put it basically to the skeleton. So we had the Cerberal and we had the Nazuchi. Those were the main cards alongside Pope, alongside Pompoko and Tantan. -tan. Um, and because of that, it's like okay, Tantan -tan, some Cerebral. That is an instant level four. If I draw Nazuchi and I draw and I have a Cerebral, then I can use those for an instant level four. I am no longer using Grimro because it's not a beast and I can't make use of it better enough. I mean, the good thing about Grimro was that if I had drawn Nazuchi or Cerebral, then I would, of course, it wouldn't be completely lost because I could just use the Grimro to search for the other one, and then of course have a have a play I could do. Simply because, of course, Nozuchi will be up to some Cerebral, and Cerebral will be up to someone itself. However, um, of course, Grimro needs to have a Fabled already on the field to do that. And, of course, this deck is not a spam deck. This is a very conservative deck, so it, it, sometimes you won't even have that. 
this deck really wants to have good first turn plays. So I'm going back to Unicorn Roots with Lock Cat being able to summon your Pegasus for instant rank for level fours as well, which is also very, which is just very nice. And Pegasus, of course, um, allowing you to set up the Lock Cat because it is a level one beast tuna and of course can be summoned with obedient school so really this deck is exactly the same as it was before but the only changes are is the inclusion of lock cat the inclusion of pegasus which actually with this duel and a couple of other duels i've had in the past has actually proved really quite nice of course it has some surprising synergy with the um raccoons which is always nice um and of course i'm not really going to be using its effect too often the secondary effect anyway but the fact that it summons itself immediately and doesn't need my opponent to have face-up cards on the field or anything like that. It means I have a monster, a level 1 tuner. If I'm in a good position and I am able to summon it via the effect of a Geeky Break, it means later on I could potentially just use it as a traditional tuner and go for something like a Fabled Reagan or maybe um, something else. But yeah, this deck is completely tentative at the moment. I am still toying around with the extra deck. I don't know why my Catasta is not in there. That is a travesty, Jack. But yeah, that's pretty much it. This is my new Unicorn. If you want to go into more depth and detail, if you want to see more dueling videos with it, please say so in the comments down below as video response. I want to try do an Archfiend deck now, um, because Archfiends are a new kind of thing I'm looking at. But I'm going to complete. I'm going to continue tinker, tinkering with this deck. And if you want to duel me, I'm on Dueling Network. Of course, you can just pop me a message and I will duel you. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm Jack Clark. You must continue more videos coming out to you soon. But until then, goodbye. Yeah. Fucking imps with mustaches. Yeah.